ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಗುರು ನಂಬರ್ ಇದೆ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಗುರುರಾಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಮೈ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಭೀಮ್ ಸೆನ್ ಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕೋಇನ್ಸಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ this inaugural concert of the birth centenary celebration of pandit ji is also uh, in sync with the world music day we had a, a contemplation that uh, what should be the topic when we talk about pandit ji what can we speak about him he is an universally known phenomenon can we talk about his music his upbringing his personality his contribution it can go on and on and on but we thought uh, we'll select few segments of his personality and try to highlight it bhim sen joshi's father uh, guraj acha was a sanskrit scholar and a school teacher but when suddenly uh, his son fled the house he left the house and announced in search of a guru the whole family was in a kind of quandary so they were searching what to do how to go about it if we uh, seriously observe within our own circle like uh, <clears throat> at least four to six families in or around circles close family circles will find one or the other person will have left the family for whatever reason for whatever pursuit but not all of them have become bharatratnas at the end of the day i can give you some examples of people like pandit uh, bhimsen ji himself went in search of the voice the guru and he learned from various teachers till he came back to pandit savai gandava and one fine day with his dedication and research and the perseverance he became a bharatratna in the world of music milkha singh whom we unfortunately lost very recently two times olympian he started running to save his life but one fine day he ran and ran and ran and he became a glorious athlete he held the country's flag aloft and one abib bekila who was the bodyguard of ethiopian king he kept running and running and running and twice he conquered the marathon race and won the medal and pride for the country so a few examples of how people uh, left the house ran away but brought glory to the whole world to the family to themselves and contributed so much to the society pandit ji when he was learning from uh, Savai Gandharva Ji. So I would like to highlight uh, his stay with the Guru. Pandit Savai Gandharva, who was a very, very strict teacher, would expect his students to be very, very punctual. And also, uh, he would assign some household chores to the family members. So Pandit Bhim Sen Ji, the young Bhim Sen, job was to bring water to guru's house uh, in a small village at kundugod near gadag so 
Bhimsen ji had to go to two different wells to bring water. One well, the water would be brought to clean the cloths and the house. And another well, another well in the opposite direction, he has to go and bring water for drinking. It used to be such that uh, Pandit ji complained, Bhimsen ji complained, not that his guru made him bring water, but he complained that the size of the pots were very small. If the size of the pots were bigger, he could make lesser trips and, uh, well, he can dedicate the same time for his learning. So that's the insight he had about uh, his learning. With his total dedication, uh, perseverance and his Guru's blessings, he became a wonderful performer. And uh, <clears throat> after having established himself as a wonderful performer, uh, Bhimsen Ji had the clear vision to take a kind of sabbatical. Uska matlab ye hai ke hum aur do saal concert circuit mein busy nahi He wouldn't want to be busy. He wouldn't want to be busy in the concert circuit. He will take only one concert a month to sustain his family. Uh, then, the rest of the time in the month, he would go to different artists, listen to them, listen to their riyah, listen to their tali, and interact with them and enhance his knowledge. That was his quest for learning. <clears throat> then, as a performer, I don't have to say much about it. He conquered the entire music scenario. He ruled the music scenario for close to 60-65 years. He left an indelible impact on the heart and soul of listeners, the organizers. I would say that uh, almost every contemporary musician and the younger generation musicians were definitely inspired and some of them were also uh, took to his uh, some gaiki angs. So they would be definitely inspired to emulate few things from his gaiki. Such was his gaiki. As a teacher, uh, Pandit Ji uh, had categorized four different types of disciples. I, I had the privilege of meeting many times and submitting myself to him, went to an audition, then I went to his student Madhavudi as recommended by him and learned from him and went back to him. So during the course of these discussions he would say, that uh, Nagaraj, I have four kinds of disciples. Oh, see, the first disciple is the postcard disciple, he would say. So somebody would send a greeting card to Panditji's birthday, wishing him, and uh, Panditji would reply, blessing him back. And he would show that, uh, the person who received the letter would show that to his friends and say, uh, I, I belong to his tradition, I am his disciple, he has blessed me. So he would be the postcard disciple. The second category uh, was cassette disciples. A lot of people would uh, listen to Panditji's uh, cassettes and CDs for nowadays. And they would imitate him. They would blindly imitate his guy. They would not know why they are singing like that. What is the proportion of Gandhar and Nishad in Yaman? Or what is the proportion of Thir Madhyam and Shuddhayot in Puriya? But they will just blindly follow him. So he would call them as cassette disciples. The third category was uh, Tanpura disciples. Panditji would identify some people to play Tanpura for him in different parts of the city. If he would go to Kolkata, some people would play Tanpura with him. If he would go to Mumbai, another set of people like that. So he would call them as Tanpura disciples. They would have enormous respect for Panditji, that apart. Their, uh, whatever little they could hear while playing Tampara with him, they would imbibe and emulate and imitate. The fourth and the genuine category of disciples that he would quote was Gandabandh Sishya. One who became officially his disciple, stayed with him in the true Gurukula order, learned from him and withstood the test, the rigor of his upbringing and training. Incidentally, Pandit Madhavudi, from whom I learned, he belonged to that fourth category and the genuine category of disciples. 
therefore i could get an insight into pandit ji's gaiki and keep it aloft and keep the tradition going so as a guru uh, pandit ji has contributed so much through his disciples his whole uh, tradition has been kept alive and he would say that kirana gharana hamara to kirani dukan hai iska matlab ye hai ki yahan har har cheez milta hai aur all things are available here so he would say i don't get confined to any particular gharana i will go to kesarbai kirkar's gaiki and listen to her tankari and invite those things assimilate those things in my gaiki so like that pandit ji uh, after learning from uh, savai gandharva he would incorporate so many beautiful elements of other gaiki other gharana other great artists and make his gaiki a very very beautiful and a complete one so therefore his music would appeal right from a common man to the scholar to the extent that uh, just to give an example of uh, his passion for learning his honesty about music <coughs> excuse me so he uh, pradeep ji attended a concert in uh, kerala so wherein he was requested wherein he was requested to sing rag jog so it was pra- pradeep ji was in his early 50s by the time he had become very famous and all awards and everything were already there in his pocket so somebody requested him to sing rock joe and he made a public announcement saying that uh, yes my dear sir i would appreciate uh, your request i wish i could have sung rock joe but well i have not been properly trained to sing rock joe so i would not like to give a harsh harsh presentation so instead i will sing some other raga this time and hopefully uh if i am invited for the same festival again i'll come prepared to sing raga jo that's the kind of honesty he displayed on stage ha huh. so it so happened that uh, incidentally pandit ji was invited uh, to the same festival once again and he made an announcement himself when i was uh, invited uh, last time somebody requested me to sing rag jog so a, a year passed since then so i have come prepared to sing that raga so he had gone to a teacher learned that raga methodically presented it so such was his honesty so therefore his music became such an immortal immortal uh, piece of art globally not just for us i can go on giving uh, very many uh, anecdotes about his personality uh, in fact uh, pandit rajiv taranath one of our uh, sarod players from karnataka pride of karnataka once he was going uh, to delhi via pune and uh, he had around 10 hours gap between two trains so when he arrived at pune he gave a call to pandit bhim sen ji's house the landline phones those days so he wanted to make sure that if he was there he would go and seek his blessings so he incidentally called gurule mane lidde tau sir if you are home we would like to come and see you and seek your blessings he said are aa jaiye hum ghar mein please come so dr rajiv taranath came out of the railway station and goes to auto rickshaw driver and he will say i have to go to bhim sen joshi's house i will get to the address the rickshaw driver said no sir i know pandit ji sir don't worry i will take you to his house so uh, pandit bhim sen ji was uh, such a popular artist not only among classical musicians or organizers but even a rickshaw driver would know who he was because uh, pandit bhim sen ji is a kind of epitome of maharashtrian devotional music also whenever you walk into any temple in maharashtra the abhangs of uh, those days they are immortal in his voice so this episode does not end there when bhim sen ji uh, i mean when uh, rajiv taranath came to bhim sen ji's house uh, he got off the auto rickshaw and wanted to pay the auto rickshaw uh, driver looking at the meter and the auto rickshaw driver 
got very worried about it. Sir, what do you think? What do you think that you are the only rich man here? You want to pay me for this service? No, sir, I am sorry. Pandit Bhimsen Ji is the pride of my nation, pride of my country. I listen to his music every day. I will come here to seek his blessings and uh, not uh, to take any money for the service that I have offered. I will take his blessings and go away. So this is the kind of uh, service that he rendered to the world of music. Thank you for listening to my small, uh, uh, I won't call it as a lecture, sharing my thoughts about the great musician that we have interacted with. I'm extremely happy to have seen him, learned from him, carrying on the tradition and would like to serve all of you if and when called. Thank you very much. Namaskar everybody. Swarashri Music Academy, Bangalore, led by my dear friend Jaya Gururaj, who is an organizer, singer and a music enthusiast. We all invite you for this evening of classical music to commemorate the birth centenary of the legendary Guru Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi. This also happens to be the 21st June, which also corroborates with the World Music Day and World Yoga Day. Well, uh, we call music as Nada Yoga, and Panditji lived as a Nada Tapasvi, Nada Yogi. It's a wonderful coincidence. So, join us for this evening. We're starting with Rag Puriyadhanashri.